everyone, this is Michelle from the Snooze Clinic and welcome to another episode of Sleep Talk. Okay, I'm in a fantastic mood. I'm really, really happy because this has to be my lucky week. Why? Because we've had two remarkable people come on Sleep Talk in just one week. In the last episode, we had Prof Ronald Lee from the National University Heart Centre Singapore who shared with us more about heart health and sleep and how they affect each other. And just this morning, we had another guest with us, another special guest. Guess who? Okay, he's none other than Prof Edwin Seat, who's a senior consultant anesthesiologist and also an adjunct associate professor with the Yong Lulin School of Medicine. Okay, so you may ask, what has the anesthesiologist got to do with obstructive sleep apnea? Like, why would you bring on an anesthesiologist to speak about obstructive sleep apnea? Okay, for some of you, you may have had a friend or a relative who was going for surgery and was given the instructions to maybe rent a CPAP. Um, and use it two weeks before and two weeks after the surgery. But why? You know, why do they have to do that? Let us find out more from Prof. Admin Seat. Today we have a special guest with us. He's none other than Dr. Edwin Seat, Senior Consultant Anesthesiologist. Dr. Seat is also an Adjunct Associate Professor at the Yong Lu Lin School of Medicine. Hi, Dr. Seat. Hi. Very good morning, Michelle. Good thanks morning. so much for having me. No, thank you for agreeing to do this. Thanks, my, thanks. My <laughs> okay, so um, maybe you can enlighten us um, more about um, what you do as an anesthetist. Yeah, sure. Uh, you know, the anesthetist is a British term. The Americans call us anesthesiologists. So essentially, we are perioperative physicians and we take care of the patients during the perioperative period. In the pre-op period, we'll take a look at the patients, make sure they are fit for the surgery, evaluate them, re-stratify them, and sometimes we have to optimize them. Our main job is actually during the operation when we look into all aspects of uh, patient care. Make sure that the heart is okay, the lungs are okay, uh, brain function, kidney function, they're all taken care of. Uh, if the patient's under general anesthesia, we ensure that the patient is not aware during the surgery and we take care of the pain issues as well. For the post-op period, uh, our main concern is to make sure that there are no complications from the surgery. Right, okay. So, um, we've heard from other specialists on the topic of OSA, mm. right? So, yeah. today we'd like to hear from you, what is OSA to the anesthetist? OSA or obstructive sleep apnea is commonly thought of as a snoring problem, uh, but it is not quite so simple. Not all patients with snoring have a clinically significant obstructive sleep apnea. Conversely, uh, not all patients with a significant OSA uh, present to us with a snoring problem. So OSA really is a problem with breathing during sleep where the upper airway collapses when the patient is asleep preventing essential oxygen from going into the patient's lungs. So OSA is considered mild if this happens on an average of 5 to 15 times per hour, uh, moderately severe if it's uh, 15 to 30 and severe if it's more than 30 times per hour. The patient may complain of daytime sleepiness, fatigue, memory loss and poor concentration. If he or she has a bed partner, a uh, bed partner may report loud snoring, uh, observe episodes of uh, airway obstruction, choking, gasping and even restless sleep. It's been really great to be here today. <coughs> Uh, well, I think uh, I'd like to leave the message that uh, OSA is an important consideration and concern uh, for patients coming for surgery. Stop bank questioning is easy to do, and as I mentioned earlier, it takes less than three minutes and should be done for all patients coming for surgery uh, so that we can anticipate problems and uh, uh, act proactively to make sure that the patients are taken through safely through the process of surgery and also into the recovery period. 
Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you once again. So, um, okay. If I have further questions, we'll be contacting you, and hopefully, you can. Yeah, clarify whatever questions we have after the session. Anytime, anytime. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Prof. Edwin. That was very, very insightful. Thank you so, so much for agreeing to do this. And finally, the many, many questions I had in my mind for many, many years um, pertaining to perioperative care has finally been answered. Okay. By the way, Prof. Edwin has been one of the most meticulous people I've ever met. <laughs> so this morning when he came in, um, I told him, I said, give me a while, I need to print out the script. And he said, oh, I already printed it out. And I said, yeah, I need a copy for myself. And he said, I already printed it out for you as well. I'm like, wow. <laughs> and when I opened his script, I was like, ooh, you know, um, there were highlights. Uh, to highlight the things which he wanted to bring my attention to. Um, he also submitted newspaper cuttings, um, the stock bank questionnaire, abstracts to studies, yeah, to support uh, what he's going to present or what he presented, yeah, earlier. So thank you so much. Thank you for your hard work. And um, yeah, and well, at the same time, I'd like to thank everyone who is... Um, been part of this and helped me to make this possible. Uh, no, 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 this is not the last episode. <laughs> Just felt like thanking everybody because I think everyone has been really kind. Um, they've accepted my invitation to do this um, without uh, getting anything in return. Yeah, and they even travelled down here uh, to my clinic in Royal Square. And I'm touched, I'm touched. Thank you so much um, for supporting my cause, <laughs> which is to create a greater awareness for obstructive sleep apnea in Singapore. Yeah. At the same time, I'm also looking for other medical professionals such as um, a neurologist to talk about OSA from his or her perspective. Um, I may even be looking for a urologist right, to explain why People with sleep apnea tend to wake up often at night to go pee. Like, why? Yeah. Um, so, well, hopefully, hopefully, if you have some friends uh, who may be able to help us with this, please get them to contact me. For the rest of you, if you have any further questions for Prof. Edwin um, pertaining to what he has presented earlier, please email us. Um, the email will be at the end of the video. Um, email us and I'll forward it to Prof. Edwin and yeah, I'm sure he'll be more than glad to answer your questions. Yeah, so till the next episode, bye!